What's going on everyone? Today I went to go move my truck to do some work and guess what? Battery's dead. Time to do a little work. Down, 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 down. Turn it up. So, you ever have one of those days you're gonna go drive your spare car or your main car? You go to use it for something like this is this is my 2005 Tundra. It's a four door, two wheel drive. It's not four wheel drive, but it's basically my, it's my workhorse. I use it for everything. And it's always been dependable. I've never really had problems out of it. But I have, I've had to replace maybe two batteries so far and I haven't driven it in a while. So I've been parking it in here off and on. And well, today I was gonna go move my other project, Stuart Little in here, do a little work to it, maybe make a video for you guys. And, well, I'll show you what it does. <laughs> See what happens. This is like the worst feeling ever when you go to start your car and all you hear, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. So today we're gonna be changing the battery, I guess. Luckily, I've got a spare battery sitting around that's perfect for this. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll bring you over here as you take a look at it. So, I've just got a stock 4.7 V8 that comes into Tundra. Yes, it's a value time battery, but that battery has lasted a couple years now. So, it's done its job. So... Let's go ahead and change this out. Here we are. Got a better camera angle for you. So here's the battery. What you're gonna need to do is remove this mount right here that keeps the battery still. And what you're gonna need for that, I already pulled some tools out, which by the way, I don't know if any of you know, I got these from Harbor Freight just as a you know, keep in a car just in case something bad happens and you need some tools, they're cheap. But Harbor Freight actually warranties all their hand tools like this socket set. So if you break one of them, even if you don't have the receipt, they'll replace it, no questions asked. I didn't even know that until recently. I thought that was really badass. <laughs> so I was more than happy to buy a set just to keep around in the car. So what you'll do take a, these are both 12s, you're just going to unbolt it, you're better off getting the front off first, because then the back comes loose, because it's just hooked in, I'll show you, so you can just push it down, if that'll work, it probably won't. Come on out. There it is. So it's just hooked in there in the bottom like that. There's a little hook. It goes through a hole and you just clamp it down. But if you take the front off, you can get you can get it loose and just twist it and pull it up. So there's there's that. I don't need that right now. <laughs> Put your bolt back in so you don't lose it. And you can just throw your uh Stuff on the ground like I did. It's not gonna hurt it. Go ahead and take this off. Positive is a 12. Mine is not factory, so it may be a different size for yours. Then take your 10 millimeter. So I've actually got a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. I know they're hard to find. Loosen a negative, and it pops right off. And then, you just take the battery, Ooh. and there we go. Lift it on out. I'll take that, put it down. So, I'm gonna walk away for a minute. I'm gonna grab the other battery, but I'll continue walking and talking to you guys. So, I happen to have a spare battery laying around. 
for another project I was hoping to show you guys very soon. But it looks like I need a battery for it now. <laughs> but this is another little cheap battery that I had laying around. So, same thing, just backwards of what you did to get it off. Slip that in. Let's see, tighten that up. There we go. Put the positive on. Just in case you got like a weird alarm or something like that, always have your keys in your pocket just in case an alarm goes off. I've had to happen before. It scares the crap out of you. There you go. Doesn't take much. Grab the part I threw. See? So now I'll just slip this down. No. Let's lift this up first. Slip this in here. There we go. No. Oh. Different height. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's loosen this up now. Oh, come on. I'm glad you guys could be here to watch all this. So while I'm doing this, if you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, go ahead and hit, hit, hit the subscribe button real quick. That way, every time I got something going on like this, which hopefully, hopefully I don't have something like this all the time. I hate breakdowns. Luckily, this is at my house. But subscribe to the channel. Leave me a like. Tell me if this is helping you out at all, or you just think it's funny to watch me fix my stuff because it's broken. I swear this truck's reliable. <laughs> and, uh, I've had this truck for about five years now. Yeah, about five or six years now. It's currently currently has almost 266,000 miles on it. And the only thing I've ever had to change, obviously, is the battery. I've had to change a blinker. The blinker was dead. And I had to change a uh, drive shaft U-joint. That was my fault because I overload the truck constantly. But it... Sorry about that. Batter or not the battery died. The uh, phone cut off from recording. So, there we go. Batteries in. Like I was saying, right when it cut off was uh, I replaced a U joint, but that's because I overload my truck all the time, towing stuff. I've been building this whole garage using this truck to tow and build and use use it for everything. So it's a great work truck. You're gonna see a lot more of this thing because I've got a lot of cleaning to do on it, and it's just it's a fun truck. So so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna. Sorry about the camera views. So here we go. One thing you'll need to know about these trucks is the computer is a learning computer. So when you replace the battery, obviously you're gonna lose your radio codes and stations and all that good stuff, but you're also gonna lose the memory in the computer of the car or the, the engine itself. So it's gonna take. It may run funny for a few minutes, or it may try and die on you. Well, mine's actually running pretty good. Usually what will happen is it'll idle really low and conk out on you. But it's fine. Just keep driving it, restarting it. The computer is learning. Once it learns, it'll be just fine. And yeah, I got a tire light on. That's because I ripped all the tire sensors out and just replaced them with stems, because I check this thing every week. And those tire sensors are annoying. But yeah, I did tell you. Currently 265,789. Runs like a charm. Heat works, AC works. It's a beautiful truck. I'm just not going to show it to you right now because it's filthy. 
but it's working. So I'm very happy. Yeah. So that's the truck. It's been a great little workhorse for me. And now she starts up again. So now it's time to move the uh, little Miata project. Time to get Stuart Little in here, make another video. So thanks for sticking around, guys. I'll see you next time.